Line drive, base hit, right field, the Royals win. Two to one. Darrell Porter does it again. Sliced up the left field line. Willie Wilson on the run. Dives. And he makes a sensational catch, and the ball game is over. Line shot, base hit, center field. Five for five. Red is now hitting 407 and gets another standing ovation. Swing and a high fly ball. Deep right field. There she goes. The Royals are champions of the American League. These were the sounds of Kansas City Royals baseball in the summer of 1980. A summer that will not soon be forgotten by the baseball followers of this Midwest metropolis. Since the Royals' inception in 1968, owner Ewing Kaufman vowed to make his team a contender in the American League West. Not a man of hollow promises, Kaufman was true to his word. And in the Royals' first 11 seasons, they were in the American League playoffs three times. However, they did not make that ultimate trip until the year of 1980. This latest chapter in the Royals' success story actually began on October 24th, 1979, when Jim Fry was introduced as the Royals' new manager. A veteran of 30 years in the game, Fry is a man of vast knowledge and determination when it comes to the game of baseball. He simply stated that he would get the most out of his 25 players, and that he did. The 1980 baseball season opened with a dark cloud hovering over its head. A threatened strike by Major League players could make this the shortest season on record. And in Kansas City, the Royals would enter this new campaign without the services of all-star catcher Darryl Porter, who would miss the first three weeks of the season with personal problems. And center fielder Amos Otis, he missed the first two months with a bad finger. Despite these obstacles, the Royals opened the season with the vim and vigor that would carry them throughout the 1980 campaign as they took three out of four from the Detroit Tigers. One of the first big series for the Royals in 1980 occurred on the final weekend in April when the defending American League champion Baltimore Orioles invaded Royals Stadium for a three-game set. In the opener, the Royals shut out the Birds seven to nothing, but the following afternoon, the Orioles blanked the Royals four to nothing. In the rubber game, the Orioles took an early 2-0 lead, but the Royals came back in the sixth to tie it, and in the seventh, they went out in front to stay. 1-0 pitch to Wathen, line down the right field line, fair ball, hit it for the corner. Singleton, can't cut it off. Wathen may touch them all. He's around second, hit it for third, and they are going to stop him at third base with a triple. Here's the stretch, and again the 2-2 pitch. Jamie swings, base hit right field, the Royals lead 3-2. Jamie Quirk punches a single between first and second. And John Watson scores the lead run. The Royals really started to pick up the pace in mid-May when they went on a nine-game trip to Chicago, Boston, and New York. After dropping two out of three to the surprising White Sox, the Royals went into not-so-friendly Fenway Park and took two out of three from the Red Sox. Then it was on to that cavernous snake pit called Yankee Stadium, and they did the same to the high-flying New Yorkers. In the opener, the Royals had little trouble as they drubbed the Yankees 12-4. The next night, they again took the Yanks, this time by a score of 4-1. Daryl Porter got things started with a sacrifice fly that scored not one, but two runs. High fly ball, pretty well hit to left. It'll score the run. Washington tags. Mercer settles under the ball. And here comes UL Washington down the line. Frank Weiss trying for third. Watson for second. Everybody's safe. Now the ball gets by the second baseman. Here comes White to score. The ball's in the dugout. And John Watson is at third base. Then a little later, Willie Akins made it a 4 nothing ball game. Akins waiting, and again, here comes the 2-2 pitch. High drive to deep right field. Back she goes. It is gone. Home run, Willie Akins, his second of the year, and he hit it off the face of the upper deck. It is four to nothing, Royals. Following the series with the Yankees, the Royals returned home to face the California Angels. In the opening game of the series, the Royals found themselves down by a one nothing score. But in the eighth, Willie Wilson practically single-handedly tied it up. Willie has a big lead. The stretch. There he goes. Frank White takes. Throw to second. Safe. Stolen base. Ground ball to the first baseman, Carew. He comes back to the bag and takes Frank White unassisted as Wilson moves to third. Into the dirt, it gets away, and here comes Wilson. In the 10th, it was that man again, Willie Wilson, who scored the winning run on a Darrell Porter single. Line drive, base hit, right field, the Royals win. Two to one, 
Daryl Porter does it again. After this series, the vastly improved Oakland A's came to Royal Stadium for a four-game set. In the opener of this series, the Royals were trailing by three in the ninth. But as Jim Fry had promised, all 25 men would contribute. And it became apparent what he meant in this game. There's a drive into right field. Base hit for Watt, and he's four for four. Bouncing ball, base hit to left. So Jerry Terrell gets his first hit, and that means the tying run comes to the plate. Lined into left field, that's going to be a base hit. One run is in, and the ball gets away from Henderson and rolls into the corner. Two runs will score. Shock will stop at second. Ground ball, base hit right field. Here comes Rusty Torres around third. Here's the throw toward the plate. Not in time. Tie ball game. This game would be resolved in 11 innings with the Royals emerging victorious. One ball, no strikes. Hamilton's soft speed curve is lined in the center field. Base hit. Here comes the winning run. Torres to the plate. He scores. And the Royals win it. The Royals ended up taking three of the four games from Oakland and were zeroing in on first place in the American League West. But the date, May 22nd, had now arrived. This was the day that if there had not been an agreement between the players and management by midnight, there would have been a baseball strike. As we retired that night, it seemed a virtual certainty that this would be one of the shortest seasons on record. But the powers that be worked feverishly through those early morning hours and resolved the issues at hand. The baseball season would not be interrupted. And no team was more appreciative than the Kansas City Royals. On May 23rd, they went to Anaheim and beat the Angels to move into first place to stay. Nothing and two on Clint. Base is loaded, two out. There's a little pop-up back of shortstop. Out goes Todd Cruz and it drops. Wathen scores. Willie Aikens crossing the plate. Chalk goes to third on the play. There's a smash into center field. Base hit. The run is across. Frank White around second. He's on his way to third, and he's in there. George Brett hit a rocket into center field. It is 5-0 Royals as Wilson scores. George gets his 19th run batted in. Runners at first and third. There goes Brett from first. Smash base hit into right field. White scores. George Brett being waved home. Harlow finally up with the ball, and Wathen has a double and two RBIs. And it's 7-0 Royals. Shades of last night. UL now with a six-game hitting streak. The pitch to him. Fly ball center field. Hurdle tags a third. Harlow has the ball. Here comes Hurdle down the line. The throw towards the plate is cut off. A sacrifice fly for UL Washington, and it's now 8-0 Royals. Bases loaded, two out. Nap to Wilson. Willie loops one in a shallow left field. Joe Rudy on the move, and he can't get there. One run scores. Around third comes Hurdle. He's going to score. Ten to two, the Royals lead the Angels. Wilson drives in two runs. And there's a long drive to deep right field. Back goes Al Collins to the wall, and she's gone. Clint Hurdle, a two-run homer. So the Royals have a 12-3 lead. The pitch to Joe Rudy. Ground ball is short. UL has got it. The throw to first, and the Royals have won it. The Royals were flying now and reached the All-Star break with a record of 47-33, and eight and a half games ahead of the Chicago White Sox. In their first game after the break, the Royals defeated the Detroit Tigers 3-2. This game marked the return of George Brett, who had been absent from the lineup for a month. In his first game back, Brett wrapped out two hits and also made this sensational play in the field. Ball's fastball is drilled. Brett a dive to his left, knocks it down, throws in time. What a play. But the hero of this game turned out to be Willie Aikens when he broke up a 2-2 tie in the sixth inning with this round tripper. So Wilcox has taken Aikens as far as he can in the 3-2 pitch on the way. Breaking ball is lifted to deep center. Back goes Lentine, a way back to the wall. She's gone. On July 18th, the Royals were at Yankee Stadium. There is nothing quite like a Yankee Royal confrontation. In this one, the Royals took an early 2-0 advantage on a George Brett home run. The 2-1 pitch to George Brett is hammered to right field and deep. Back goes Reggie Jackson, away back. It's gone, a home run. In the fifth, Brett made it a 3-0 ball game. Ground ball off the glove of the first baseman into right field. Wilson scores, Hal McCray around second on his way to third. And the Royals lead 3-0. 
Then in the sixth, the Royals just broke it open. Aikens at third, Washington at second, White at first. The Royals now with a chance to bust this game wide open. The pitch to Wilson. Ground ball, base hit past the first baseman into the right field corner. Aiken scores. Washington scores. Frank White will score. Now they're saying a spectator leaned over and interfered. There's a drive toward the left field corner. It is a fair ball. White will score. Wilson will score. McCray tries for second. He's in there. Meanwhile, left-hander Larry Gura was flirting with a no-hitter. He finally lost it in the seventh. Breaking ball line to left field base hit. The Royals won the game 13 to 1 and eventually took the series two games to one, making it six out of nine for the Yankees for the season. There were still three games left to be played between these two adversaries the following weekend in Kansas City. The Royals wanted to win the season series with the Yanks, and in the opener of this three game series, they guaranteed that as Clint Hurdle did most of the damage. High fly ball, deep right field. Back goes Gamble to the wall. It's off the wall. A run will score. Gamble now chasing the ball back toward right field. Clint Hurdle is being waved home. Here he comes. He's got a chance to make it. He is safe. A check on the runners and the 3-2 pitch to Clint Hurdle on the way. There's a looping liner. Base hit to left field. Aikens will score. Here comes John Watson to score. Six to one Royal. Fly ball, well hit to left, but Wathen's back on the warning track. He's got it, and the ball game is over. The Royals took the series two games to one, and for the season, they had taken eight out of 12 from New York. However, their encounters with the Yankees in 1980 were not over yet. Following the Yankees series, the Boston Red Sox came to town. The two teams staged a wild and woolly affair in the first game. The Red Sox raced to an early lead before the Royals came back. Finally, in the seventh inning, George Brett tied it. Drago's 3-1 pitch on the way. High fly ball, well hit to left. Back goes Jim Rice to the warning track. It is gone. And the ball game is tied. Then in the ninth, George Brett saved it. He bounces one to third. Brett has it. Coming home, and the play is made. He's out. And in the bottom half of the inning, Brett, along with Amos Otis, won it. A little looping fly ball out into left center, base hit. He's around first. He's on his way to second. The throw safe. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Bouncing ball, barrels into his left. Fumbles the ball, the Royals win it. The Royals were really smoking now, especially against the American League Eastern Division teams. A week later in Detroit, Willie Wilson made this catch to stymie a Tiger rally and preserve a 5-4 Kansas City win. Quisenberry trying to get the out. Stretch the pitch. Sliced up the left field line. Willie Wilson on the run. Dives. And he makes a sensational catch. And the ball game is over. Willie Wilson, a headlong dive down in the Tiger bullpen to save the ball game, perhaps. He crossed the foul line, made a backhanded catch. And Wilson has saved the game. It was at this point in the season that George Brett was putting on the most torrid batting performance since the days of Ted Williams. On August 17th against Toronto, he hit in his 29th consecutive game, going four for four, bringing his batting average up to 401. Brett waiting, Clancy set the pitch. Lined into right center field, base hit. John Watson at second base is gonna hold right there, and Brett now has a 29 game hitting streak. Witt puts down a sign, Jim Clancy the right-hander into the stretch. And the first pitch to George Brett. Line there up the right field line, base hit. White scores. Around second and headed for third comes Watt, and they're going to wave him home. Here he comes. The throw safe. Brett has doubled. He is three for three, and the Royals lead four to two. George hits a fly ball to left field, and it's going to be over the head at the left field. They're arching all the way to the wall. Washington scores, Otis scores, Rothen will score on the double. Although Brett was capturing much of the attention not only in Kansas City but nationally, the Royals continued to play superlative baseball. On August 19th in Texas, they found themselves on the short end of a 3-1 score in the ninth inning. With Hal McRae, Amos Otis, and Willie Aikens doing the honors, they came roaring back to win it. McRae hits a line drive, fair up the right field line into the corner. Washington will score Hal McRae to second base. 
And a fan reached out and touched the ball, so they're going to give him two bases. Line drive, base hit right field. The game will be tied. Otis around first, puts on the brakes. The Royals have come from behind to score two in the ninth. Otis ripped one into right field. Johnson to Akins. A shot into center field. It's a base hit. The Royals take the lead as Otis scores. Wathen stops at second. And Akins, two out of four. It is four to three Royals. Meanwhile, Brett continued his assault on the 400 mark. On August 26th in Milwaukee, he reached the 407 mark with a five-hit performance. Line shot, base hit, center field. Five for five. Brett is now hitting 407 and gets another standing ovation. At this point in the season, it was no longer a question of who was going to win the American League West, but when. As the sweltering heat of August turned hopefully to the gentle breezes of September, the Royals were 85 and 46 and led the West by 20 games. Five ball center field, Rick Miller there makes the catch. Wilson will score and the Royals take a one to nothing lead. Lined into right center field and that's gonna be in there. Two runs will score, Willie Wilson around first and puts on the brakes. So it's three nothing Royals as Wilson drives in his 41st and 42nd runs of the year. Base hit, center field for Frank White. Willie Aikens being waved home. Here's the throw from Rick Miller. It's offline, and Aikens scores, and Watham to third. There goes Frank White from first. Ground ball, base hit left field. Pass to diving third baseman, Carney Lansford. Watham scores, White to third on the single by Clint Hurdle, and it's 5 to nothing Royals. Jason Thompson awaits the 3-2 pitch, and here it is. He struck him out. And the Royals have won the West. Dennis Leonard congratulated by all of his teammates. And the Royals have won their fourth Western Division championship in the last five years. So they clinch the Western Division title with their 90th win of the year. Dennis Leonard wins his 19th. The Royals are the best in the West. So the Royals had wrapped up the Western Division title almost three weeks before the end of the regular season. Surely this would be the longest part of the campaign. However, there were a few things to be taken care of. Namely, George Brett's and Willie Wilson's assault on the record book.